Hello guys and welcome back to DMs Montreal Beauties. So it's finally time to say goodbye to the Big Bear Seasons will be the last episode. And this is also the last episode of Season 7. I was kind of planning it this way anyway. I figured, you know, it's the end of April and the season is not right anymore for these kind of beers. But I've thoroughly enjoyed trying big, bold beers. I've totally expanded my palate. I've even got a problem right now drinking smaller beers. I've got to get myself readjusted back to the you know, the old me, I suppose, and get ready for some smaller beers that will still have lots of flavors. And I've got a bunch of them lined up to be reviewed. So yeah, it's a good place to stop and uh, it's a good place to sort of recap. And I promised you guys a nice logical beer for this review, if you've seen my last one. And I, I don't think there's a better and more logical way to end the season than by reviewing the bigger brother of the beer that started this season. So there you go. This is the Trappist Rochefort. 10. It's the biggest of the three. This is a famous Trappist quadruple from Belgium or Belgium Swan Dark Ale. This is probably one of the most, if not the most, potent beer I've ever had from Belgium. Weighs in at 11.3% ABV, so be careful with those, even though it's a small 330ml bottle. I was totally thrilled to find this here in Montreal. And if you're somewhere in Quebec, it's still available in certain places, so uh, you might want to brush and buy a few bottles before it's gone. Although I may be wrong and they might, might keep this in stock for, for a year or two. I don't know. This was about four, four and a half dollars. So I think it's a good price because I've seen this sold in the States for over five or six. So I'm not going to go into much further explanation. This is a classic Trappist quadruple from Belgium. One of the, probably one of the most acclaimed ones together with Chimay uh, Blue. Alright guys, I'm ready to go straight into the review and crack it open and see what this beer is all about. Just like I was expecting, it looks very similar to the number 8. Yeah, that's about it. Dark brown colour, very nice, lovely head there. Usually when I think of a quadruple, I think of lots of dark fruit. In this case, I'm smelling sort of candied fruit and caramelised fruit. Even chocolate covered fruit. Rich in chocolate very yeasty and also quite a lot of uh, flowers there. Alright, let's try this lovely beer. Wow. And I thought Rochefort 8 was huge. A nice sweetness to it. Some yeastiness, but it's not overly carbonated, which I always appreciate in a Belgian beer. Go and tone it down a little bit and take a smaller sip so I can appreciate it more. Very nice creamy head. Even, you know, feels good when you drink it. Being over 11% in ABV, this doesn't taste that boozy, surprisingly. It doesn't taste much more boozy than the 8, which was about 9%, and didn't taste that, you know, that boozy either. I'm getting a bit of heat in the mouth, not too much. Definitely a nice roasting is going on together with the sweetness. Lots of fruits, raisins, prunes, dates, some roasty bitterness there. This is phenomenal, guys. This is really good. There's a slight oakiness again, and uh, there's a slight spiciness to it as well. Perhaps in the aftertaste, it's somewhat similar to a port wine, but overall, it tastes like a quadruple should taste like. Very true to the style, very traditional tasting. Remarkably drinkable and very complex. I'll be back in a few moments, guys. So I'm back with a Rochefort 10. It's an amazing beer and it's a really, really, really well brewed quad. I mean, didn't have any doubts about that, but this just reinforces my expectations, I suppose. For such a big, potent beer, this is incredibly smooth and really drinks well. Even though I'm tasting alcohol a little bit, probably more than I was in the beginning, but it's still pretty much manageable and not, not an issue. Of course, I wouldn't want to have this very often. I'd probably opt for um, some other quads like St. Bernardus 12 and Chimay Blue, just because those have a bit less ABV and probably are a bit more drinkable as far as, you know, feeling after them goes. It's more of a special kind of brew that you want to have once in a while just to celebrate something or perhaps have this with some aged cheeses. That would be a good match, I'm pretty sure. Really rich on the, the caramel getting some brown sugar, that dark fruit, again, a slight kind of woodiness and aftertaste reminiscent of a port wine. I like this a little more than the 8, which was already an amazing beer. I don't think I'm going to give this a full grade. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10, just like I gave um, the number 8. In my world, a perfect quadruple will have 
a little less ABV just so you can enjoy more of it. Not that it's a sessional beer, of course not. I really enjoy this. It's just, you know, a step below being a perfect, perfect quadruple for me. So 9 out of 10 for Rochefort, number 10. Great beer, highly recommended. Even if you're in the States and uh, you have to pay the five, six dollars. I think you should try this at least once. It's it's well worth it. All right, guys, that's all I've got to say for this time around. Uh, thanks for watching my big beer season. Thanks for watching season seven. I'll be back shortly with the next season. Not going to do anything fancy, but I'll follow up uh, shortly with some information. All right, guys, take a good beer. See you next time. Bye.